Welcome. In this video, I will quickly go through all the major updates that Imperator Rome's patch 1.5 together with the Imperius Content Pack DLC brings to the game. And both the patch and the DLC was released in August 2020. Let's start with the three features that comes with the 1.5 update. As always, we have a lot of minor changes like game balancing, AI tweaks, interface updates, and so on. I won't go through them here. If you want to dive into the details, I'm going to put a link to the patch notes in the description below. First off, we have some updates to the wars of the Diadochi. The big succession conflict over Alexander the Great's empire have seen some updates. A new legacy of Alexander war goal has been added. Phrygia have been renamed Antigonid Kingdom, going from a name more focused on the geographic location to the name is more known as in history. The Cappadocian Revolt event chain has been changed to be less deterministic in when it triggers. Trace now has its own separate event for joining or staying out of the war. Instead of being passively pulled in by Macedon, they now get different options to decide how they want to join or if they want to join. Over to Pops. And for the first time in this game's history, a new Pop type have been added. Meet the Nobles. And nobles generate uh, research and trade routes. And they have a high political weight. And talking about political weight, that's also something new that have been added. And this simulates the influence pops have when generating unrest, which basically means that a low number of nobles with a high weight will generate more unrest than a large number of slaves with low political weight. And if you look at this bar, you can also tell their happiness and their political weight. Slave happiness have been reworked. Previously, slaves are usually pretty happy, not anymore. Their happiness will be much lower, but to counter it a bit, happiness no longer affects slave output. One of the biggest changes in patch 1.5 is a reworked culture system. Previous to this patch, the only interaction you did were to assimilate conquered land into your culture. This patch brings a lot of new things. But first off, some culture groups have been renamed or split into smaller groups, you can by yourself explore the culture map mode and see what changes you can find. First up, they have added a culture UI, giving you an overview of the culture situation in your nation. And there's a lot of information to be found here, and mostly I'm going to let you explore it yourself. You can see from tooltips what they do. Um, instead, I'm going to talk about uh, the bigger culture features. And uh, first off, you can take decisions for each culture, giving them certain rights or protections and uh, whatever options are available here can vary from different uh, cultures. You can also integrate cultures and you do that by giving them civic rights to become nobles or citizens. A culture which have this right will be integrated. And as you can tell, when I click here, get some information, what it's going to cost, it could take time and so on. You can also sort by integration status. You can see the uh, acceptable cultures or the integrated cultures you have in your nation. And this uh, culture UI also make it very easy to see where different cultures are in your nation. There's also been added a historical integrated culture for quite a few nations. Rebellion has been reworked a bit. Provinces can now rebel separately when their province loyalty reaches zero. And neighboring provinces will join in a rebellion if their loyalty reaches zero while a revolt is ongoing. Provinces that rebel will declare their rebellion war using a new offensive war goal that sets their own capital as the target. And subjects can now declare an independence war against their overlord without incurring a vast penalty. The Senate or Republics have been reworked. Characters now exercise their influence by controlling votes. First off, nations now have three main Senate factions as opposed to five previously. Three unique factions are added for Rome as well as uh, a set for other Republics. And the Roman ones are Optimates. They are representing aristocrats opposed 
the rise of new men and influence of the common people in the Senate. They believe that populars are a destructive force that will wreck the ancient privileges and traditions of the Republic. Boney tries to strike a balance between the needs and wants of the poor people while still representing stability and acting through a gradual reform. Populars claim to act in the interest of the common people. They are happy to overthrow all traditions and they oppose optimates in almost every way. Votes that the parties of the Senate wield are no longer dependent on discrete modifiers. Instead, they come from characters that are part of its membership. How much Senate influence each character has can vary greatly, with some being good for many more votes than others. This means that it will now be possible to handle a troublesome party by trying to get rid of their influential members. The Senate influence of a character is based on their power base, but it's also modified by a number of factors such as traits or jobs. And you can see what faction a character support and how close they are to change what fraction they will support in the character screen. And uh, the Senate's approval will now applies to most actions you wish to take. Keeping the Senate happy will reward you with more absolute power, but displeasing them will cause your rule to be inefficient. And faction issues are added. Fulfilling a faction's agenda will please them. However, if they are elected, they may attempt to push their agenda without your consent. Trade rework. Trade goods now have a route price depending on the goods type. This is modified by whether a trade route is domestic, import or export, and will generate commerce income for both parties. Citizens and nobles now generate trade routes for the provinces in which they reside. Trade goods have been entirely rebalanced, reducing modifier quantity to a more manageable level as well as now focusing on pop type modifiers. Now over to the Epirus Flavor Pack DLC. This is a little bit special because originally this flavor pack was the pre-order bonus for Imperator Rome. It has now been updated adding a few more stuff than it had at release. If you pre-ordered the game, you have this flavor pack, including the updated version with all the new stuff already, it's yours, you own it. If you didn't pre-order it, you can now buy the flavor pack for a much lower price than normal DLCs. And the, the updated uh, Epirus flavor pack contains unique army and ship models for Epirus. It adds the special Epiro monument, the oracle complex of uh, Dodona. It adds six event changes related to the life of Pyrrhus of Epirus, each with new art. It adds one new music track, it adds a new set of missions, and Pyrrhus now possesses a bloodline trait giving him a bonus to martial prominence, moral of armies and monthly ruler popularity gain. And there you have it, all the major updates for the 1.5 patch and the DLC. If you found this video helpful, I would be very grateful if you click that like button. If you have any questions about the patch or the DLC, ask them in the comment section below and I will try to the best of my ability to answer them. And of course, if you enjoyed this content and want more of it, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.